Ladies and gentlemen, special guest here on RPT, Red Pill Tamales. Who do we have on the line today? Mayra Flores. Thank you so much for having me. It's um, honestly, I'm very excited to be here. Yeah, this is going to be cool. Um, I, I told Chingo, this is the collab that everybody didn't know they needed. <laughs> the, the Tamaulipas connect. I was really excited. The Tamaulipas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, I, I feel like you should really explain to listeners what you're aiming to do before we even ask you any questions. Well, I'm running for Congress here in, in South Texas, in Texas 34. I'm wanting to bring some balance of power here. Uh, we've had a one party uh, controlling South Texas for over 100 years. And uh, I believe that it's important when you have two parties uh, fighting for the people's vote. And I believe that it's going to make us all better. And at the end of the day, it's, uh, it's for the people. How amazing is it that the RGV has become <laughs> ground zero to this like political tug of war. Like, I mean, it's just amazing that a hundred years the Democrats had control and probably took people for granted. But like, what's the vibe right now out there, like on the streets with just the people you get to talk to and what are they, what are they concerned about? They're, they're concerned about the, the ga gas prices. They're concerned about the grocery prices. That's, what they're concerned are they going to have enough money you know to pay their bills at the end of the month not this nonsense that washington is talking about these are the real issues kitchen table issues that are affecting us and that's why i refuse to you know to listen to what washington has to say i'm focused here on south texas and what the people are concerned about and and I believe that that's how we're going to be able to be successful in winning this special election and also that re-election in november so th since that is a week from today, explain to listeners who might be in the area or might know people in the area about what the special election entails. Well, Philemon Vela, our congressman, resigned. He was offered a job in Washington, a lobbying job, and he pretty much said, you know, screw everyone. I'm going to take this job um, that, you know, it's worth millions of dollars. So he literally abandoned the district and that's why the special election was called uh, governor abbott called for a special election on june 14. no one knew who we were prior to me running in this election no one knew who texas 34 was and it's it's time that we have a voice in washington what triggered your uh, so why, why did you start what like why did you leave your professional career not leave but why did you you know say i'm gonna i'm gonna do this but simultaneously i'm gonna try to run for congress like what was your turning point for a lack of better phrase I'm just honestly fed up with the compadrismo that we have here in South Texas. We've been taken for granted. We are still taken for granted. The Democrat Party isn't doing nothing uh, or investing in this race at all. Why? Because they feel entitled to to us, to our vote. And honestly, that's that's my frustration. The the entitlement from the Democrat Party that they feel that no matter what they do, Hispanics are always going to be voting for them, and that's not true. Well, they, they were right for a hundred years. Yeah, for real. <laughs> that is so crazy. Um, so you've been, I mean, I guess conservative, like upbringing, like for the longest? Yes. Yeah. I mean, I was born in, in Burgos, Tamaulipas, Mexico. I was raised with strong conservative values, grew up with my, my grandparents, my parents, and I was blessed to come here to the United States. And that's something I always talk about. I'm not willing to put aside my values, my conservative values, God, family, aside for a political party. No political party is worth us forgetting how we were raised. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of people forget that. And it's important that, you know, we, we put aside the political party and we put our values first. Uh, people out there in the RGV, I'm pretty sure they've noticed, like, how radical the left has gotten like how do people do you think how do you how do you i mean obviously i'm asking you to speak for like a yeah. bunch of people in the rgv but like stuff that we're seeing i mean maybe because i'm 42 husband dad to me when i see the uh footage of in dallas with the uh drag your kids to pride and wow. they got them in the um in the i guess a daytime mm -hmm. some type of bar club thing weird signage in the background kids tipping uh the drag show people and it's like, El Valle, they're not, I don't think they're going to get down with that type of stuff. I, I just wonder if like people starting to connect the dots. I yeah. mean, obviously they are, right? The, if every, everything's flipping red down there. And have you, fa have you had any con like points of contention or people that might say they don't agree with you or they don't know why you're running as a conservative in, in your like immediate circle? Did you get some pushback? 
Honestly, no, it's all social media. There's a lot of people very brave to attack me on social media, but uh, on the ground, when I'm knocking doors, no, I've only received 100% um, support. Just on Saturday, we were knocking doors in Bronzeville. We even talked to people who voted for Biden and will be voting in the special election for Mayra Flores. So yes, the Democrat Party is just doesn't align with our values and they've gone so far left. I feel like they've abandoned the Hispanic community. You know, people like my father, who was a Democrat all his life. And he says, I didn't walk away from the party. The party walked away from me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what a lot of people are saying these days, right? (laughs) I mean, that's how I feel. Yes. Like I said, they've just gone so far left, like so many bad ideas, disruptive behavior, rioting, looting. You know what I mean? Like, like we're pro gun, we're pro Second Amendment over here. America first, mm-hmm. exactly, I, I, absolutely. And when did it become okay to take your kids to a bar? Like you know, and it's, it to me, it, it's not even it's about that, right? It was drag queens, but when did it become okay to take your child into that environment? To me, it's like these parents are are failing their children. At the end of the day, those parents made the decision to take them there. Yes, that shouldn't have happened but the parents were okay and that's what saddens me that the parents were the ones that took them to this uh, to this bar Mm -hmm. and no south texas would never support any of that and that's the reason why i'm so glad that you know we're we're getting people excited because washington has this idea about us in south texas i got a question since you're down there boots on the ground um what What was the big, I guess, tipping point for the Valley? Like, when did you start seeing things really start shifting in a new direction? Back in 2020, um, I saw the shift, especially when um, the Democrat Party was really pushing for the defund the police um, and also the constant attacks towards our Border Patrol agents. And what they don't understand is that the majority of the Border Patrol agents are Hispanic. And, you know, my, my husband's parents are from Mexico. You know, and the constant attacks towards our agents, we felt it was very personal to us. It was an attack against our familia, you know, and we're just very law enforcement friendly here in South Texas. So that messaging did not resonate with us in in South Texas. And and it just, you know, kept getting uh, the support towards uh, President Trump in 2020 just started gaining. But it was it was because, again, no one had ever invested in South Texas. Um, no one was ever excited about uh, about a race because the Democrat Party never did anything to earn the vote. But Republicans prior to 2020 were not investing in South Texas. So it took people like ourselves to get people um, excited and motivated. And we showed that the Republican Party in 2020, hey, we're here. If you invest in this area, you'll see you'll see us coming out, you know, in bigger numbers voting for uh, Republican candidates. And that's the reason why I decided to run, to continue building up from what we did in 2020. And look what we have now. It's it's amazing. Yeah, God bless the RGV, the people of the RGV mm-hmm. for like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? For like uh, standing in the breach and like being the... Ya era hora. Ya era hora. Sí, sí, sí. like, hey, espérate, espérate. Ya se están pasando ustedes. Ya se pasaron de la raya. Sí, sí, sí. Like, uh, like the, yeah. when you mentioned earlier, compadrismo, that reminds me of like yeah. Mexico politics, almost like the same type of vibe and culture, just of like corruption. And <laughs> it's like, that's what people are trying to get away from. That's it's why. Alive. It's alive. Yeah, it's, and it's alive here in, in South Texas. You know, people told me, Myra, you're not related to anyone in politics. You don't have the money. You don't have the experience. You graduated at South Texas College. You know, what qualifications do you have? You know, and they believe that I don't have the qualifications. And I believe that the qualifications to be able to run for office in this country is you must love this country, number one, and respect the Constitution, respect our country. Look, look what we have now. We have people that have tons of experience experience that you know graduated from the best universities and what good does that do look what they're doing to our country they tell us that we don't have the qualifications so we don't run but these positions are for people like us that understand the struggle that knows what it it's like to live among us so i refuse to accept that you must be a lawyer uh, to run uh, for office <laughs> 
Yeah, so the 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 Democrats they've miscalculated uh, Mexican Americans, Latinos, uh, huge miscalculation. Um, they assume huge. they they assume that we're all like pro open borders, and for the longest time, when I didn't understand all the stuff about the debate, I was just kind of like identity politics and like, oh, we can't be mean to immigrants or whatever. But like, like what we said earlier, I mean, a lot of uh, folks down there um, are immigration and customs border patrol i'm surprised it took this long honestly that it took this long for the rasa down there to actually see what was going on like it's crazy that it took to 2020 for things to start turning around but i'm glad it did and what what does the 34th district cover for people that don't know well for the special election it covers cameron county parts of hidalgo uh clayberg willacy kennedy jim wells uh san patricio goliad DeWitt, Gonzalez, <laughs> and yeah, it's a, it's a big district. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah, It, it, yeah. it is, lots of uh, traveling, um, but we're seeing amazing, amazing support from, from all over. Because- there you go. Sorry, it froze yeah. for a second. Uh, froze are you getting any feedback from young people? <laughs> like, are young people asking you, like, how can I get involved and how can I start making a difference for the future? Honestly, that's the best part, that we have a lot of people that are very young 16, 17, 18, high school involved in our campaign, and they're the future. So I'm very involved with our with our youth, and I'm very proud that we we get young young people excited, and we make it fun for them. You know, <laughs> so I, I think that's the that's key. It's you know to make it fun for them at the same time that they're out there knocking uh, knocking doors and making phone calls and i'm very proud to to have the support of a lot of our youth well i got one last question for you what was the biggest obstacle i think that you have over or you think you've overcome so far during this campaign personally it's the you know i'm not there for my family i think that that to me has been the hardest it's not being there as much for for my young young children and it, that's been very difficult but i i try to stay focused that at the end of the day this is this is for our children this is you know their future depends on it so i that's uh, my focus but it that's probably been the hardest for me it's not being there um every single day for for my children honestly nothing else i can i can handle it <laughs> i can handle it but it it's always about you know not being there as much for for my kids but yeah, it's, it's, it's gonna a, be all it's gonna be all right <laughs> hey yeah we have a country to save uh that's a big sacrifice uh we definitely it really uh, is yeah we're, we're family oriented people and for sure um also i really like your slogan make america godly again and, and the merch yeah i'm very i'm 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 very supportive of uh, of the of the slogan actually Pastor Louis. It's a, actually a city church a slogan. My slogan is God, family, and country, and I translated it in Spanish and I put Dios, familia, y patria. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dope. Yeah, that's great because especially as you uh, you guys are doing outreach to the youth, we have to counter all the anti-American victimization, victimhood. Instead. Everybody listening, doesn't it make more sense that if you're going to be talking to the, the, the youngsters coming up, you want to empower them and let them know that, hey, this country has opportunity. You have rights. You're a citizen. You know, it, it, you have access and you can do well as long as you put in the hard work and stop trying to tell the kids that they're victims, they're being marginalized, they're oppressed and it's a white man's world and they don't like you because your skin color. It's like that's very counterproductive. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 absolutely. I mean, look at me. You know, if I was able to come from Mexico, I worked in the cotton field, you know, became a respiratory care practitioner. You know, that's the American dream. And I want to make sure that that American. American dream continues to be alive for for our kids and unfortunately I do see it slipping away if we don't stand up now. So is your website the best place for everyone listening to go support, buy the merch, make contributions, vote, get information mm-hmm. on voting? Absolutely. Please go to www.mydaflores uh for congress.com go to my facebook as well uh please follow us share our our post and get the message out there about spread the chisme <laughs> yeah spread the, spread the spread the chisme uh this special election is very very important and it's time that you know we we put texas 34 first for a long time we've been treated like second class and mm. it's time that we that we are prioritized
Yeah. So everybody listening, go see for yourself. See what Myra is about. Check out her website. Um, all her bullet points of what she stands for is there. And now it's up to y'all to weigh and measure it on your own and see if uh, you want to get with the campaign. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. God bless you. Y'all have a wonderful day. God bless. Thank you. All right, guys, quick break. We want to talk about Friends of the Podcast. Uh, this is actually like the fuel source, the energy source, the focal source of the podcast magic mind they're showing so much love to all the members of the thea uh they decided to continue to work with us they dig the podcast they like that uh people are digging magic mind and all that it has to offer don't forget to shake it because you get all that good green stuff at the bottom mm -hmm. it's very natural so you got to shake it dog where can they go you go to magicmind.co forward slash chingo when you check out use promo code chingo you get 20 percent off and if you subscribe and you join the subscription where they send it to you every month, bro, how much percentage you get up? 40%. 40, the big 4-0. Yeah, man, it's a really good deal, actually. That's damn near half. Yeah, it's a really, really good deal. I don't miss a day. Don doesn't miss a day. You take yours every day we record, and any chance that you have it, you take it on the road with you. It really is a fantastic product. Yeah, so uh, it's, a, it's a game changer. We really, we really dig it. Uh, it's just a little shot. It's a herbal supplement. It's just two ounces. You get to do more and stress less. And they're friends of the podcast. And they're hooking up listeners of the podcast. So you got to support friends of the podcast. Get us get us. Magicmind.co forward slash chingo. Get 20% off or use the promo code chingo. You get 40% off if you're joining the subscription. Boom. Sass. You guys just heard our segment with Myra Flores for Congress. Straight out the RGV. Uh, shout out to her husband. He is uh, actually a current agent in U.S. Border Patrol. I thought you were say the TIA. I mean, might as well be. He right? might. He might be. We he might, might as know. well. He might be because um, they, they actually attended a show that oh, we cool. did in McAllen, and he he was like, "Hey, man, this is for you." And it was a uh, beautiful gift. It was like a badass pocket knife. Nice with the Mita insignia on there. So mm -hmm. I felt like I was an agent. I feel like you were in there. I was going to ask you for your papers, Rob. Uh, yeah, I have a hard time finding them, to be honest with you. Am I, I don't know what I am. Am I legal here? Am I from here? I don't know what's going on. With that beard, I know you're going to get harassed by TSA. Yeah, yeah. I got to keep it. If I ever fly, I got to keep it short. I got to cut it real nice and tight. Yeah. No. Yeah. Hey, it was good to be traveling, though, without masks, though. Oh, yeah. That way the libs, you see who they are, the people with bad information. <laughs> <A ton> of, <laughs> are a ton of them still wearing masks on the plane? Not a lot, but you'll see like, okay, typical, like, you know, Beto sticker on the Prius. This is going to get into Cat what, ladies. what we're going to talk about today. I was getting gas yesterday, which, by the way, I paid five nineteen. Five nineteen. Five dollars and nineteen for a gallon. For a gallon of premium, you know. Nonetheless, it was premium, but still five nineteen. I've never thought in my life I would have to pay that much. Mira lo, mira lo. You know, I only pump premium. Yeah, you know, I tengo el turbo. El tu 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 tu. I gotta have the premium. Puro pinche diesel, okay, compadre. Puro pinche power. Came on o came on. Which, by the way, five nineteen. I know. Oh, no Vaseline. Sparky made that. Came on o came on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can search it. I believe if you search Chingo Bling, it'll come up as a gift. I believe so too. Um, so I, I go into the gas station to get, uh, a drink or whatever. And there's a lady, she was probably, well, I assume was a lady. She was probably about <laughs> six, one, six, two, uh, long ish hair, had a really tight mask on and had uh, a rainbow on her shirt and then had a little one that was probably like six or seven. Cause she was about, uh, he, he looked like a, he was about the size of the twins. And, uh, he had <laughs> long hair on one side and a shaved head on the other and had a mask on as well and was in all pink, but it didn't look like a girl. It looked like a boy. Mm. So, yeah, it's child abuse right there. Bro. I'm just saying that's just what I noticed. And I, I couldn't, I mean, I was grabbing the drink and I was looking over and I was just like, wow, like, mm -hmm. pobrecito. social contagion. Pobrecito. Yeah, man. Uh, that's kind of like parental abuse. I would say so. And um, on that same note, in a jujitsu class the other day, um, the instructor was saying, like, all right, you're going to put both hands on her chest because you're trying to go into the arm bar, right? Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, if, you, if you're uh, rolling with a female, then, you know, put it up here, right? Yeah. For females up here and that we not hurt no machine. Yeah. And, um, and I, in my head, I want to be like, well, what is a female? <laughs> you should have asked him just for shits and giggles. And somebody in that parking lot got a, um, got a Let's Go Brandon sticker on their truck. And oh. I'm trying to figure, I'm trying to like deductive reasoning like okay which yeah i'm over here like okay it was here in the morning class when i was here and then when i came back with the kid 
it was here. So it's, I'm like, which one of your instructors? You should just walk up there, you know, you take off your slides as you get close to the mat. You know, you're just like getting ready, put your gear in your belt on. Let's go, <coughs> let's go Brandon. Just yeah, kind of yeah. look around. Like, be like, sorry, I'm late, y'all. Yeah, man. Have, have inflation, open border, gas prices, cost put, of goods. Put my 19th, let's just go Brandon sticker on a gas pump. Yeah. So shout out to um, Myra Flores for uh, coming on the show. Yeah. And uh, talking to the people and letting everybody know what her agenda is and, um, you know, what she stands for and what she aims to do for the people in the RGV district. 34. 34. Yeah. I think stories like hers, man, are really interesting. And, you know, anybody that's in office, in my opinion, as I've observed them, it's really hard to like get on a podcast where you don't know, like, what people are going to ask and, and how, they're, how they're going to put you on the spot and yeah. I got you kind of shit. Plus, we be high half the time talking yeah, shit. for sure. But here it's like, it's as we're trying to make it as, as comfortable as yeah. who, for whoever wants mm -hmm. to come on the podcast mm -hmm. and just kind of like get your message out there. Like, let's get a new audience who may not know who you are. She's made a if, huge yeah. splash down there. Yeah, and if you want to get uh, access to more of the degenerates, yeah, yeah definitely zoom into our show. Yeah, yeah. The uh, what are they? What are they called? The deplorables. Yeah, deplorables. The socio degenerate deplorables, yeah. who are actually some of the best people you'll ever meet. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying. Shout program. out again, yeah. patreoncom forward slash red pill tamales. Where do we have a new distribution center at? Rockfin.com. We're, uh, we're setting up a new channel. Yeah. Uh, shout out to our distribution partner, Rockfin.com. If you sign up to subscribe to the premium content mm -hmm. and, and join like say you you know maybe you don't like patreon you want to join at our rockfin you'll also as a bonus have access to all the other premium content creators on there like eddie bravo brian callen sam tripoli jimmy door mm -hmm. whole bunch of people ton of them mm -hmm. yeah i just wanted to throw it out there in case people didn't know uh because this they'll get this one before the one we just recorded so okay. uh go check it out i i'm so happy that we have another distribution that we can try out mm -hmm. and just see how we can benefit the audiences right so our audience and then the audience of the people who are already on there mm -hmm. to find new information because anyway you slice it you got two brown guys in a garage studio talking about subjects that a lot of people just don't know about yeah and they might come here and be like you know what that was my turning point and, and yeah exactly and right now i feel like biden is the biggest one red pilling people yeah where so, do we start with that yeah i think he's like their their actions i mean some of the stuff I, I believe still goes over people's head but just the fact that like the incompetence i don't know how hypnotized you have to be to like constantly be like well that debacle is not his fault and well that one see i can explain that one it's like the gas he doesn't control gas you know let me know which oil company brandon works at and he, you know what i'm saying like i don't give a damn how hypnotized you are I feel like they're doing such a bad job. They're dividing the country. They're r ruining the economy. They're just trying to gaslight you. He did a speech the other day where he's like, Americans have never seen this much cash in their fucking oh, savings. Oh, dude, uh, dude, <laughs> dude, I got it queued up right here. Since I took office, families are carrying less debt. Their average savings are up. Where? A recent survey from the Federal <laughs> Reserve found that more Americans feel financially comfortable than any time since the survey began in 2013. Oh, <laughs> come the, on. The Ministry of Truth and the party's last command is that you ignore your lying eyes. You mean to tell me after watching this 15 second clip, you don't think he is he couldn't be more unattached or disattached from America? Yeah, this is what y'all wanted. Uh, this is what uh, LeBron James, Cardi B, Hollywood, George Lopez, uh, Eva Longoria. This is what they bamboozled y'all into believing. They wanted you to hate Trump. And they thought that this man was going to be going to get us back to normal. But the only normal has been gas lines, bread lines, war, sending more money to more countries, inflation going up. I'm trying to read some of the replies here, see if any of them. I'm sure half of them are bots. As Elon has said, I believe. <clears throat> At least half. Uh, yeah, man. But, uh, but no, I believe that, um, you know, Joe Biden is, is the red pillar in chief. Like, people are going to start flocking to our show we still ain't got no sponsors really but uh but hey we're, we're about to have people flocking to our show people are showing interest okay they're yeah, showing interest couple, like all right, right what's going on here we've stuff. we've put you on the uh on the maybe back burner for a little too long now let's start diving into what are they saying on our pt and it's showing yeah so uh uh, welcome. If this is your first time tuning in, man, this is RPT, Red Pill Tamales. We should start with that, huh? If this is your first time listening. I mean, yeah, like um, we have some pretty good intros, man, um, on a lot of our episodes yeah. where sometimes you'll throw in the one about like, have you noticed, you know, inflation yeah. out the wazoo? Like, 
have you noticed like this isn't what they promised you they were just like put on your pearls and your chuck taylors and now you have representation and representation matters and you know beautiful joe biden and his beautiful family and his pets they're gonna move into the 1600 pennsylvania avenue and they're gonna unify the country and 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 van jones was crying you know <laughs> today God. my son he he's gonna know character matters um t telling the truth matters representation boy all we got was we ain't get representation you got inflation i mean come on bro uh, uh trompitas he was he was ready to come in and, and further clean shit up. He was like, China owes us reparations, trillions of dollars. But as much debt as we owe them, that would have undid probably most of it. All they can focus on was fine people. They're fine people. Very fine people. They're hoaxes, man. The media manufactured a bunch of fake debacles for Trump. They were just trying to like, oh, the walls are closing in on Trump. Trump, he hasn't showed his tax returns. Trump, Trump, Stormy Daniels, Trump this, Trump that. And now you have real crises. Yeah, I think it's 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 gone too far to where it's no longer uh, acceptable to just, in my opinion, you can't just keep ignoring what's going on. You can't just keep saying it's not his fault. He just got in office. He's new or some other lame bullshit or his advisors. Because, you know, for Trump, it's always like he had bad advisors. He had this, or this that and the other. They always they would also make excuses for trompitas. But this old guy here, he doesn't you know, he doesn't run his Twitter account. You know, he doesn't read half the shit that he's gonna say on that teleprompter beforehand he just goes up there he's the figurehead he's the guy in front of the teleprompter that does a poor job reading it anyway. with the beast by dre in his ear with obama I've seen that. first of all sometimes biden be having brown eyes sometimes he had blue eyes sometimes he got earlobes sometimes he don't look man i ain't no conspiracy theorist oh you're not it's <laughs> <laughs> like just last week talking about the earth was flat <laughs> oh you're not y'all gonna have to prove it to me that the motherfucker around but anyway um it's just when are y'all gonna see this shit, dog? What number episode is this? This is episode number 180. So it's episode 180. Let's just say, and you made a good point a little while ago, and we forget to do this intentionally, we do maybe unintentionally, that if this is your first episode, mm -hmm. who is Chingo Bling? If, it's, if you're one of the tens of thousands that for whatever reason hasn't signed oh, up shit. to the Patreon yet. I gotta give him a whole back life story. Not the whole back life story, but give him, <laughs> give him the short and sweet. Like, what's the short and sweet? All right. Mexican American from Houston, Texas. Um,. Let me see. I went to a motherfucking prep school in New Jersey. I went to college in San Antonio. I got into the music game from doing college radio. Uh, that turned into like a record deal. I was on MTV, Source Magazine. I was out here with the mixtapes. Chingo Blina, the Miley King, Mr. They Can't Deport Us All. Uh, and then started doing stand-up comedy about seven, seven and a half years ago or so. And then in 2020, the CCP unleashed a biological motherfucking economic missile everybody trompita said it was a hoax you know what i'm saying and now we starting to see like well shit man how much of this was the flu have we factored in lockdowns and how bad they might have been so that was my red pill moment that's when like i started seeing the democrats burning every goddamn thing like y'all just going around burning every goddamn thing and we get gaslit when we're like hey are y'all not gonna prosecute where, where the cops you know they're like no fuck the cop defund the cops because george floyd and then they're like uh, uh uh you know started getting all identity politics with everything and i started to wake up and be like wait a minute the view that ain't a real these ain't real political uh pundits this the view this is going to be the who is uh, shingle bling clip and that's when i spit out my soy milk i was like wait a minute this fucking up my testosterone and then he joined jujitsu. Mm -hmm. Then I started buying more and more uh, firearms. And then he got on TRT. Then no, not yet. No, wait, no. wait till I get on that TRT, boy. Oof. You're gonna have them Vitor Belfort <laughs> traps. You're gonna be able to see your neck just walking around like, who wants some, oh, boy? Who wants? Fuck some? you, mean my Border Patrol knife. You know what I'm saying? My my head gonna be bigger. My big ass head. My my cheeks might get red and, and get shit. That stone jaw. Yeah, start getting <laughs> puffy in the face like Alex Jones. <laughs> well, that's from something else. That's what, from what too much on? drinking. Oh, okay. Well, shit, I don't know. We need, we need to get you a drink a little more. We need to get you a drink a little no, more. No, 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 no. What do you mean? No, no, you do not. <laughs> yeah, we do. No, we don't. When we get into the new studio, I I'm swear. I'm too old, bro. No, no, because no, no. We're not going to get wasted. We're just going to drink some. All right. I'll when we it. get into the new space, here's the, here's what I'm excited for is decorating it to your liking, to what you think it needs to look like. And behind me, maybe we'll actually use the bar or something, but maybe whoever sponsored the podcast is going to put bottles behind us. That's how I'm going to decorate. The whole way I'm going to decorate is where can some product placement A hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? You want your logo on this? You want where you... I'm going to be like NASCAR. Bruh, and the reason I say this is because we... 
you know, we will have drinks from time to time, you know, kind of decompressing the day or whatever, socially. Uh, I haven't drank vodka in a long time. And all of a sudden, I've turned into the machine. Bert Kreischer. How, how you drink vodka, bro? How you doing? I mix it. I like, uh, I don't care what you say. What I you like do? vodka cranberry. Yeah, yeah, that's usually. Is the good. And then, uh, what's, vo- that a, what's that, a Cape Cod or a Cosmopolitan? I think it's a Cosmo. Think okay. Yeah. Or, or lemonade. Lemonade and vodka? Oof. Oh, you're a fucking savage. Bro, it's Boy. so good. Man. And the particular one that I got was introduced to me by a buddy who works at a, at a, who runs a liquor store. It's made by the same people that make Buffalo Trace. I love Buffalo Trace whiskey. It's not because mm-hmm. Rogan likes it. I've been drinking it for a long ass yeah. time, but it's the same distillery. Mm-hmm. It is. Well, they make a vodka? They make a vodka. It That's is your favorite bee's vodka? knees. Right now it is. So uh, anyway, we're going to have some of that. We're going to have some, some, um, uh, you like the tequila with the lime, the what you, ranch waters. Can have some ranch waters. Yeah, I'll probably just sip tequila straight. Oh, yeah? Okay. Yeah. Get loose with That's it. That's how you're supposed to do it. Whatever, bro. Mexican style. I right? know you're alpha, right? But but no, I, I know. But seriously, though, I'm a five-star athlete, and I'm 42, and uh, I'm into combat sports. So uh, I, any, any alcohol really fucks me up, dog. Like, I'll give you the best example. Okay. Uh, we were on the road. Yeah. We had uh, Juan Perez. Julian Luera, he's out of El Paso. Marisol and myself. We did San Angelo and we did Odessa, right? So Julian, I don't know where he gets his weed from, who grows it. I don't ask questions. Yeah. But this might as well have been some fan weed. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like somebody like a fan gave you some weed. Because we had the biggest headache the next day. We felt hungover and we just Long story short, my wife and I were just like, man, everyone's asking us, like, where's the after party? Where y'all going to go? There's a bar across the street. Or, are y'all going to come talk to fans? Or, what y'all doing? Da, da, da. Like, I know a lot of people in that neck of the woods. So they're like, what's up? What are we doing after this? And I'm like, I'm 42. And uh, no puedo, wait. I just it just takes too much. Out. Just a little weed made us feel like you know what I mean. There's there are people to people, right? There's some people that can get just blasted, and they're on another level of awesome, right? And mm-hmm. then there's other people that like yourself. If I have one cup, one shot too many, I'm wrecked for a day or two. Mm-hmm. We uh, back in the day we had uh, Dean Lister, Dean Boogeyman Lister, jujitsu black belt legend on the Jujitsu podcast. He was notorious for not just drinking prior to giving a seminar or training or, or I don't want to put, you know, stories out there that aren't true, but he drinks a lot. And this day he was doing a seminar and we we're going to do a podcast after the seminar and Dean would just throw him back, bro. I don't know if he had a six pack, a 12 pack or what, but on a whole nother level and like nothing, huge fucking ogre savage, badass jujitsu practitioner. And he just, he was like the machine, you know, with vodka, but with beer and just would roll you up conditioning for days Never got tired. No, I can't. I want to see you do that. <clears throat> no. <laughs> Come on. Mm-mm. Just a six pack. You better off. You, you're more likely to see Brandon finish a whole speech without a teleprompter. <laughs> he did a speech the other day where literally in the first five seconds, like he goes up to the podium <laughs> and he's like this. And then five seconds in, it's like whatever they gave him kicked in and he stands up straight and he oh. starts giving the speech. Oh, he went, oh, what are they giving him? You know what I mean? Bro, I can't wait for all this shit to come out. This is the greatest novella, bro. Like, unfortunately, it's, it's really happening and we're <laughs> coming back. You know what really, let me say this, bro. Okay. Let's see if I can find it. Marisol pulled up. <gasps> I was going to ask you about this. Jesus Christ. Okay. I might have hit the weed prior to what I'm about to tell you. But okay. my, my wife pulled up on Apple TV. She put up um, some old vlogs of hers on her her channel. Because Penny wanted to watch something, right? Probably. It's like she's like, yeah, let me see my birthday party mm-hmm. or something like that. She's like, all right, I gotta go on my channel, whatever. So now it's playing like old vlogs, like during the pandemic. Like, all right, we're look. These are the shelves in Target. And, like, we're wearing masks, or or we're stuck home again, right, or whatever. Yeah. And I and my thirteen year old, like, she had a like more of a baby face. She was like, what, I guess eleven. Yeah. And. Like I said, I might have been high at the moment, but I'm watching, uh, in retrospect, the the pand- whatever, the lockdown and everything, the, the reaction to the bioweapon, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. And I'm seeing my daughter's little baby face on TV, and I'm hearing what we're saying. Like, it's all the headlines. Like, the, we documented how we were going through it, and it, it angered me. It, <laughs> bro, it pissed me off because how many innocent children were combatants in a psychological attack i mean little kids don't need to be stuck between this 
huge crazy debate about like am i going to school <clears throat> like does my dad have a job you know what, what, what is what, what is this the future we're gonna be on fucking zoom all the time we have to wear masks all the time like will there be a cure when is this shit gonna mutate to the omicron so it could be safe or um you know is this the flu how many numbers like ventilators are they good are they bad like so on and so forth but it really struck a, a chord with me and I got pissed because I'm like, oh, motherfuckers, either whether it's lizard reptilian people or whether it's just globalists <laughs> or whether it's just the World Economic Forum, anti-American people, the CCP and whoever else. Right. Whoever else had their fucking cuchara in the fucking menudo. Right. Like mm -hmm. basically saying like, oh, I know how I could benefit from this. Even big business, huge wealth transfer. Like all these people, the talking heads, the media, the journalists that weren't doing their job, all these folks. And sure, some people are like, if you look at it through the lens of, bro, it was science and Fauci was doing his job and Bill Gates is nice and he wants to help us by buying up all the farmland and making synthetic breast milk and you know what i'm saying it's dude you're like they did what they had to do bro and they tried and you know i don't like masks either but we had to and like all those people don't be selfish you can't get on a plane like that i'm like bro like the psychological just it, i i don't i don't look at it as oh they were just had their best our best interests at heart no, you know, the world. Oh, Klaus Schwab and 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 you know the World Health Organization, Dr. Ted Rose and all these people. Oh, they were doing their best, and that's the data we had at the time. It's like no motherfucker, y'all already had the genome over there. Y'all knew it wasn't from fucking bat pangolin soup. So I, I, I gotta ask you this. How do I phrase this? When that happened, so Money Soul kind of briefly mentioned that yesterday. That I was so mad. <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing because I can imagine. Because the last time I saw you before we started doing RPT was. The beginning of 2020, like January of 2020, that shit pops off in March. Mm -hmm. I saw you maybe like a month later, let's say in April, there was some stuff I had in the garage. You came, you came to pick up, masked up and stuff. <laughs> and um, to, so to that point, a month into this, uh, this economic missile that was hit by the CCP, what, what was the tipping point? Was it that you were just seeing all of the headlines and did you already start noticing sides were saying different things? What was it that disseminated like your view, the view show perspective? Oh, by then I wasn't fucking with the view by then. Okay. That, that was just, I don't know. That was just some shit that my wife would like to watch like daytime TV and I'd be like, what they talking about? And oh, you just kind of hear the main topics, yeah. but they're giving the, their bullshit spin. Right. Right. Um, I think at that time, the time you're describing where like I had the mask on and all that is like, I might've been listening to like Scott Adams and it was still very like, well, what study and what data, mm -hmm. you know, it wasn't just like, it's the fucking, I, I wasn't on some, um, I don't know what Steve Crowder or any of these other people, Shapiro, I don't know what they were saying at the time. I don't think I was tuning in really to them. So I didn't really know if it was like, this is all fucking hoax. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, this shit does not work think about it it's proven it was like okay well can it stop some droplets and does it spread through droplets is it airborne because i was hearing about a lot of people catching the shit like lucky had caught it he i think he ended up in the hospital and and all this other stuff and i'm like okay well i don't know if rob's red pilled i'm gonna wear the fucking mask around him or well when you, know, you drove up and i didn't have one on that was probably an indicator that you were cool nah i don't know i, I don't really <laughs> remember it like precisely yeah. mentally where i was but but yesterday watching those vlogs and seeing my 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 innocent child like just looking at the camera smiling like yeah we're here at target or like uh oh, i forgot my mask or you know or whatever and they're just like their whole world and and uh everything just upended and turned upside down to where you don't know what is what like think about how frustrating it is as a parent where you're trying to like protect them guide them and kind of be a, a somewhat of a northern what is it a compass mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like kind of like hey listen like a guiding right? star yeah like i'm 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 gonna inform you of whatever i need to inform you but i'm trying to process and like i'm reading the book about viruses you know and epidemics and pandemics you know what mm -hmm. i'm saying like let me read this book let me listen to the interview let me see what that book is about who's saying what like how serious is this shit Especially in the beginning where it's like, dude, you don't want to spread that shit to grandma. Like, we don't know. Like, okay, we think it came from a lab, but they're not looking into it. Who said? Who went to check on it? Uh, it was motherfucking uh, Peter Daszak. Yeah. That's who they sent. 
They sent Peter Daszak to go over there and be like, no, 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 everything's good over there at Wuhan, the virology lab. Nothing to see here at this lab. Nothing to see here. And Fauci, you trying to you trying to be like, okay, well, why hasn't Trump fired him? You know, and what's up with Dr. Burks? What's she talking about? And okay, well, was Trump tripping? Like, they're having these. Um, y'all got to remember, y'all. I hope people don't get amnesia to the fact that we had transparency for the most part with the previous administration. Like they were doing press conference at the press conference. Some of the times that shit was shooting Trump in the foot because they were just waiting for him to say something they could edit and make him look crazy. Uh, but he was always up there. He was always taking you, you, your fake news. Even if he had to remind a motherfucker, bitch, who you work for? China. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Your publication is owned by who? Okay, then. Basically, like, nah, let them in, and I'm gonna show y'all how, how stupid this shit is. I want to tie a lot of this into uh, what happened in Uvalde, but before I do that, uh, I've been hearing people talk about the new ownership for CNN, right? How they mm. they said from the jump, like, we want to make this more about news, we want to get the opinion shit out of here, and blah blah blah. <laughs> and somebody made a really good point where they were like, look, when it comes to what sold and what created clicks and what brought in money, it was Trump. Trump. He broke the fucking simulation, Trump. right? Trump. So he's out of there now, for now. I say for now, and when he comes back, you don't think they're just going to go revert right back to what they were doing? It's a good point. Right? Very good point, because there's so many, like, yoga moms that get their opinions assigned to them, and they believe weak-ass leftist memes or, like, little stupid clips that just reinforces their side of what they think is good. Mm -hmm. So I believe CNN can get some old money and pull it off where they're like, okay, we're... People aren't buying buying the uh, Joe Rogan's a racist thing as much. Elon Musk, we're trying to paint him as a fucking uh, grab him by the pee. You know what I'm saying? It's like, who do you go after after you vilified everybody? It's like they're they're cramming everybody that they could possibly vilify for two years, not realizing that there's two more years of this. It's like, shit, who do we point the finger at now? Like, what do we do? And it's who, like, who else can we call a white supremacist? Yeah, and then Trump comes back, and it's like it. it the amnesia thing, right when you said it, I was going to say out loud, we're, you said, uh, Peter Daszak, we're already kind of forgetting all of the shit that we talked about for 16 months prior to two months of being locked down. And then I say that to say this, because this just came out today as well. Ah, oh, God damn it. What is this, bro? CDC raises monkeypox alert to level two. Recommends masks during travel. Get your monkey ass up out of here, bro. Nah, I'm I'm cool. I'm good. I'm tired of the mask. Here's another one for you. Right. CDC advises travelers to wear masks to protect against monkeypox. Put your mask back on. As it raises alert level and confirms 31 cases in the U.S., including seven in New York and six in California. This is on the uh, dailymail.co.uk. Yeah, so the other one was from the Washington Post, by the way, for those wondering. Um... Again, man, anything for control. I don't know how they think this works out well for them with the midterms coming up, but here they go again. I don't know, man. Some people have, uh, what is that, Munchausen syndrome or something where you like like the abuse yeah, and you like praise your abuser and people are like, you know, they can't wait. Like the NPCs, they need the new <laughs> upload download chip where it's like, I love Ukraine and... Uh... You would think eventually those brains would fry going from BLM to Ukraine to pride so fast, you know? It's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah. Straight to trans lives matter. Fry their little circuits or whatever they got yeah, going on. Yeah, abortion, there. my body, my choice. And then you're like, you say that same thing for the jab. They're like, no, you're selfish. Uh. What if those chicks at Lakewood just started convulsing and shit and freaking <laughs> like, out? Like, Ukraine. Oh, uh. my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> like the fembots on Austin Powers. Yeah. Uh, and then the reason I brought up Uvalde is uh, I was listening to some news commentator talk about um, what happened in Uvalde, right? And somehow the, the masks and, and the CDC and these things all kind of came up. And I don't know if they put it together this way, but in my head, I was like, look, we're all for good law enforcement. I had a, a, a state trooper who's a friend of ours over for dinner day for yesterday with his uh, significant other. And we all know good cops. We all know good people. I know some really good friends who are cops and they're good people. They're also they're hard asses like they're appropriate law enforcement type of personalities and would do anything to save anybody. We also know shitty cops. We've all ran into those for sure. The people during the pandemic two years ago. We're running into stores and planes and libraries and churches and enforcing the law on you to either get the fuck out of here or we're going to arrest you, put your mask on. I couldn't walk into an Xfinity store without having a Harris County walk up to me or whoever the fuck it was. I think it's Sugarland PD being like, uh, 
can't be in here without a mask. Like, are you serious, man? I'm returning a device. Ta he, all the guy could have done was take it from my hand and I would have been right out the door. But no, he had to make his point. So he made his point. I couldn't get my, my, at the time, six year old, five year old a haircut because he didn't have a mask on. But when it comes to saving these kids, these people are still sticking to the story that they did everything they, they could correctly, right? There's too much of a, my point is, there's a huge cover up going on in Uvalde mm -hmm. that I'm continuing to hear about that people are starting to also forget about. But those motherfuckers, you know what I mean? Well, well, right now, politicians trying to figure out how they could spin it to their agenda. Yeah. Like, like, like Beth O'Rourke literally saying, uh, these, our kids' lives are literally on the ballot. So children's lives are literally on the ballot, Beto. What a dork. For real, Beto, that's what, that's what's on the ballot. You know, it's because these damn NRA and these white board Republicans and their goddamn guns. It's like, okay, so uh, Nigeria, they just had a mass shooting at a church. So that's the NRA's fault. Oh, don't tell me about that this morning. I didn't know about that. Yeah. So how are you going to blame that on Republicans? It's in Nigeria. Yeah. You know. And the fact that uh, old Joe Breezy, he came out and said, uh, basically without saying exactly, but that he just wants to take all your guns, right? What did he say? He wanted to, I forgot what he said during his speech initially after that, that incident, but it came off like very, uh, like governmental official, like we want to, you know, repeal this and take that back and do this. But if you just kind of like dissected it all, he said out loud, we want to take your guns. Basically, we just want to take all your guns. Yeah. Not doing, some, all. They're doing buybacks in like Utah and I forget what other states where they're like, you know, bring your bring your pistol, bring your rifle, and they giving you like peanuts, bro. You get like a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars, depending on what it is. And in today's economy, what the fuck? They literally a tank of gas. You paid them to take your weapons. Yeah, like I don't know who is doing that. Who would do that? I don't understand. Like, I guess you need the hundred dollars more than you need the gun. I could be, but but that don't make no sense. Unless I mean, there's wife... gun there's guns at pawn shops, you know. So. Yeah. There's some people get desperate, but man, they probably won their only gun. <laughs> New York raised the the age to 21 for, I forgot what specific, I saw the headline, New York raises, you know, age for purchase of firearms to 21. You don't think people in New York who want to buy a fucking gun or find a gun are going to find it? I mean, first of all, they had um, Operation Fast and Furious, where Obama and Eric Holder and some other people were family, were sending, <laughs> yeah, Fast and Furious, sending... Uh, Selling firearms to the cartel in Mexico, which were later used to shoot and kill a United States Border Patrol agent. And Eric Holder was able to say uh, that's executive privilege when uh, he was supposed to got subpoenaed to testify in front of Congress. Mm -hmm. And he didn't get arrested the way Dr. Peter K. Navarro did. Yeah. So you're looking at regime politics, ladies and gentlemen. Did you show trials? Speaking of all of this, did you see the story of the mom from Uvalde? Yeah, well, she was explaining, like, yeah, they tried, they apprehended me, and I yeah. jumped that fence, and I got my two kids. Yeah. How about that? And that, everything she said went against the official story from the mm. Texas Marshals. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't, ca I didn't catch that. Yeah. What were the discrepancies? Uh, that she didn't see anybody in the hallways when she went into the building. There was a bunch of stuff that she said that was not in the official statement, basically saying that, like, what they said is lie. They should have lied. Because at, at one point... Didn't they say it was like 19 cops right. in the hallway yep, nothing, waiting nobody. on something? Mm -hmm. And then she's like, I was paying attention to where the blasts were, how far they were, yeah. what hallway they were coming from. And then she said, I didn't see nobody in the hallway. And she also said, like, why aren't y'all all running in there? And right. she's, like, she's like, a couple of y'all might get shot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know if she drew this conclusion, but somebody on Twitter was drawing the conclusion that it, it felt like or it seemed like they were just waiting for the shooter to run out of ammo before they did anything. Which is disgusting to think. Jesus Christ. Um, I, I believe the protocol for active shooter like that, especially school, is take that motherfucker out ASAP before he even gets in that goddamn building. Well, I think in there, the Uvalde, uh, the one, I think the New York Times or New York Post got a, a hold of the training guide. Mm -hmm. First one there, first one in. If you get shot, the next one there goes in regardless you know so was it the fact that he somehow locked himself in the classroom that i don't know i'd be talking out of my ass if i answered that but there was him and then there was the um funeral home gentleman did you hear that story no what happened with the funeral home gentleman? i'll pull it up for you because uh so f to wrap up the mom real quick she's now she's getting threats from the local law enforcement that if she continues to speak out to media she could face charges of obstruction of justice wow so back to my point about all yeah, this COVID mandates and then being strict on, on that. And now you got a cover up over here where they're actually, you know, 
Well, yeah, it's just different departments. You know what I mean? Like, like you said, like not all cops are bad. And, yeah, and we just don't even know what the hell. You know what I mean? Like, like why? For example, check out this little uh, tidbit of trivia. I believe that that school, Rob Elementary, mm-hmm. in Uvalde, had already had I think more than forty uh, lockdowns because cartel activity mm-hmm. and like police and chases and i mean it's i don't know how far it is from the border but uh democrats you know what i'm saying democrats y'all the ones trying to like i mean there's article after article of like demographics are gonna take care of it to where everything's gonna be blue demographics are gonna it's like and then people say replacement theory like you're a fucking hater conspiracy racist demographics show and it's like y'all leaving it open for some reason. I don't know how many refugees. I don't know how many jihadists. They've already caught jihadists. I don't know how much fentanyl. I don't know how many guns, drugs, uh, human trafficking. Y'all want to destabilize America? Because if you wanted to turn America into a third world country, how would you do it? It might look just like this. Erase, you know, dilute their sovereignty, erase their borders. And you're seeing the results of that where this school got locked down 40 plus times already damn just from the proximity to the border and joseph raheem breezy's uh thing where he's like yeah fuck you know title 42 and you got the one you know fuck the wall and i didn't know that yeah so in in essence i mean it's almost like well what does that have to do with what what you were saying in a way like okay well still (laughs) what's up with this cover-up and bad police work and and they made the they're making the schools soft targets like y'all making it to where it's gun free zone and and no one's bringing up the discussion of how do we secure these schools better they're like no 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 don't talk about that yeah the yoga moms they don't want the yoga moms with the bob strollers and the lululemon to stop and think past the bumper the bumper sticker slogan they don't want them to be like you know that's a good point what is stop? that's why they vilify trump so much they they made him so radioactive that people refused to tune in to a fucking speech for once. Like, okay, what does he have to say? I know y'all called him Nazi Hitler, whatever the fuck. What is he saying? He's like, what's stopping the Democrats from securing our schools and protecting our children? The way y'all got security and guns and, and all this other shit. And walls that's and shit. why I, I hate, like, strip. News is important, right? Giving people the facts of what you know based off of your sources who are either there or close to there or whatever. But all these news organizations, whether they're on YouTube or on TV, will revert to polls to give you information about stuff, right? I've never understood polling. I'm obviously not an educated journalist or a news anchor, but when I hear uh, them talking about stricter gun restrictions stricter gun laws and and whatever they'll say like, like currently this was yesterday 65 percent of americans agree with stricter gun laws i i don't buy that for a second it's and not, it's like yeah because i live in texas or small town texas it's just i don't see that and even then it's like you can get you can turn yours in if you want right you don't have to have one if you <laughs> they, don't want one but guess what they're trying to persuade you exactly. they're putting out these articles they normalize and so everything comes back to persuasion they just trying to finesse it, you know what I'm saying? Who but are you Biden polling? was the biggest finesse. Who, yeah, but he sucked at it. And somehow, ironically, he got away with it. Well, yeah, that's why I don't fault Biden voters and supporters that much. Because regardless of the motherfucker, didn't he, he knew he had to campaign. He's like, fuck, I'm going to do waste energy and gas if I ain't got to be out there. <laughs> oh, because he really cares about that, right? His, I mean, not Corvette. energy and gas, but like ener- <clears throat> his energy. Like, yeah, yeah. why would he waste his time? Like, all they had to do was make it seem plausible that somebody liked him somewhere. That's it. Oh, that reminds me. Next thing you know, the dislike button is going on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> it's for content creators, you son of a bitch. Yeah, it has nothing to do with the White House. Um, and, and then I'll play the video here of the gentleman from the uh, funeral home. I was reading, this just came out uh, right now. So Mexico pre- Mexican president vows to influence American elections. Oh, my God. So uh, President was Obrador. AMLO. Uh, is it AMLO? Yeah, that's yeah. His, that's his uh, yeah, Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador mm-hmm. expressed he would be willing to influence the rhetoric surrounding the U.S. midterm elections if any candidates were to speak poorly about Mexicans. 
while speaking at his uh, on this on his desire about U.S. reforming the immigration system. Quote: We are not going to allow Mexican immigrants to be questioned in campaigns to supposedly win votes. We do not accept xenophobia. We do not accept racism. He said uh, May twentieth at a press conference referring to the U.S. November elections. He noted that his policy is non-intervention in self-determination. Uh, Quote: And if a party candidate's thinking that they speak ill of the Mexican, this is how it's written, they are going to get votes well. From here, we are going to denounce those facts so that our countrymen over there know who is who, he added, warning that there are 40 million Mexicans in the U.S. compared to Mexi uh, compared to four, 4 million Cubans that USA have a great influence on U.S. policies. Now, the, it goes on. It's really interesting to read. What in the Marxism? Exactly. What is he talking about? Why would you come out and make a statement like this? Like, what exactly is... Do you think that... Like, it, it doesn't paint a good picture of the people here, you know, for, for the people here that left Mexico. If you say, they're going to listen to me say that that we're the good guys. And if you hear anything that's spoken illy about you because you left Mexico and went to the United States... Don't vote for them. I, I Again, I just skimmed through it before we hit record, and I don't know what to make of it yet, but I wanted to read that little <clears throat> quote to you. So on Breitbart, it says, Mexican president calls for American super state, comma, open borders. And then it there says, uh, it says Mexicans, I'm sorry, Mexico's president is, revi is uh, reviving calls for a continental super state that would combine North American employers and South <clears throat> American employees and sideline tens of millions of middle class Americans. Quote, I will go in July to visit President Joe Biden at the White House, and I want to discuss with him the issue of the integration of all America, President Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador said at a press conference in Mexico's presidential palace, Los Pinos. He continued, my position is that just as how the European community was created, we have to do that in America. However, any unification could only come after the United States and southern countries resolve their disagreements, he said. Quote, there has to be a change in the policy, an end to confrontation, an end to hate, an end to threats, the blockades, the foreign interference, and choose brotherhood, good neighbor policies. The same continent-wide superstate was pushed in 2001 by President G.W. Bush and Mexico's then-president Vicente Fox. Their unpopular, any willing worker, that's my Bush, uh, <laughs> any willing worker, plan would have allowed U.S. employers to easily import low-wage employees from Central and South America. It was derailed following the 9-11 attack. The policy would spike Wall Street and Fortune 500 profits by giving them floods of cheap foreign workers, plus many new foreign consumers. Lopez Obrador's statement came during a long complaint about U.S. politics and the supposed power of the anti-Latino Cuban voters in the United States. And it goes on and on and on, talking about his good relationship with Biden. Biden's a good man. Uh, Obrador's push is tied to longstanding dreams by South American elites for their own Southern Hemisphere superstate. The idea was pushed by Simón Bolívar, 1783-1830, uh, in the early 1800s, but failed because of the distance and diversity of South America. And it goes on and on and on. Uh, there's even a video clip. Um, so it sounds like some motherfucking... European Union type shit, right? Mm hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah, nah, bro. Nationalism. <clears throat> Nationalism. You're not finna, uh, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. bitch, this ain't Europe, motherfucker. The EU? Uh, shout out. Well, currently, G Gio is a Johto okay. in the Discord, which is Juan Big Stoner. A J Moto, yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Moto with a J. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much slang that comes out the Discord, y'all. Uh, not a question, but rather a statement. Number killed by school gun violence in uh, its two list. That's the first one. Virginia Tech, 33. Sandy Hook, 28. Uvalde, 22. Uh, U of T Tower, 18. Parkland, 17. Columbine, 15. Santa Fe, 10. Um, um, I don't know what the last one was. Mm -hmm. 10. Number killed by communist violence after gun confiscation. China, 65 million. Russia, 25 million. Cambodia, 2 million. North Korea, 2 million. Ethiopia, 1.7. Afghanistan, 1.5. The Eastern Bloc, 1 million. And Vietnam, a million. And you know that uh, the fact checkers on the internet, the quote unquote fact checkers, um, it, like I've seen that argument, right? Mm -hmm. Where it basically tries to compare like, these are some mass shootings that were very, very tragic and very sad and are being used to try to disarm you. Here are the amount, millions and millions of deaths that come after people are disarmed. 
Well, when Germany's included, right, because of the Jews, first they were disarmed. The fact checkers come in and say, I, I don't know if it was Wikipedia, Reuters, I don't know who it was, but they're like, they were saying like, well, technically, actually, um, something about like, what? their fact check was so stupid. It was like, Aren't they all? Yeah, no, but this one was really dumb. It's like, wait, so the Jews was disarmed first and then they were mass, it was genocide. And then they're like... Well, technically, at the time, you know, the weapons and, you know, uh, you know, they, you know, they probably, what were they going to do anyway, even if they were like, I forget the stupid, like, justification. Don't, yeah, basically, don't count Germany in your little meme. Oh, okay, cool. Sure. Dummy. Why wouldn't we? Basically, look, they want you to be defenseless. They want you to be helpless and hopeless. That's what they want. They want you to be dependent. Uh, a, a hungry citizen is an obedient citizen. Uh, so another one from, uh, from Juan Vic's donor, uh, also some of these, by the way, guys, if you're in the discord are from previous, so we have an RPT questions channel. Some of these are from uh, previous days where people have asked questions. So it might not be the most recent one if you're listening to this, but here are mass shooters from recent mass shootings. Um, if you're not watching the video, you They're won't all black. see it, but yeah, uh, Sacramento, Brooklyn, what does that say? I, Iowa nightclub, that what this is? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Vegas hookah bar, Virginia hookah bar, Sacramento. See, in these cases, I'm sure many leftists would be like, well, we have to have a discussion about mental health in the black community. You know, there's, you know, the, you know, there's issues uh, that go stemming back to slavery and, you know, white supremacy is very stressful, stressful. And it'll, it'll cause somebody to go out and, and shoot a whole bunch of people. Yeah. You're not going to hear that on the news though. You're going to hear but, crazy yeah. things like a car ran into a pile of people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, accidentally on its own. Yeah. Yeah. But there's all kinds of stuff. And, you know, the point is crazy people going to do crazy shit. That's the point. That is the point. And also to go along with that point is that crazy politicians who support crazy rules or policies will, in a sense, support these crazy mm -hmm. fucking uh, vic uh, violent offenders. And persuade you into giving up your guns. Yeah. And here, we'll end this episode with this video because there's still so many points to get to, guys. We have a lot of other stuff to talk about later on in the week. But um, I don't think I sent this to you. So let me just find it and queue it up. But uh, since it drops on Wednesday... We have Myra, obviously, at the beginning, at the top of the show. Uh, what do we shout out other than Rockfin? Patreon.com, uh, Legalized Freedom Tour, uh, new merch, man. Man, we got to tell them about this new patriotic merch yep. we're working on. We're trying to hustle to get it all ready to drop on 4th of July. I have a new single, the Come and Take It remix. Oh. Uh, you know the one with the accordion. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That, that, uh, that you like. Oh, that's, yeah, that's my favorite version. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the version you heard first. Uh, that's dropping 4th of July. Oh, word. Mm -hmm. I can't wait. Badass. For sure. Oh, I just got a DM from another potential sponsor. Oh. We needs that. Oh. Yeah, if y'all want this show to continue, <laughs> and you don't want to see me pulling up with your Uber Eats. <laughs> You know, because, hey, the Harambe, they're going to try to use that to, like, close down comedy clubs and shit. And there goes that tour. All right, I found it. Uh, this is one of the most disturbing things that I've seen in a long time. And we've played some pretty gnarly shit on the podcast. What is that? Bro? I'm going to play it for you. Let me know when you read. Yeah. All right, that lit. Let's see if I can make it bigger, too. Oh, there we go. Ladies walking. Stroller with her baby. Mm -hmm. What the fuck? Oh my god! What the fuck? And then the guy drew drove off. Where is this? You want to take a guess? Brooklyn, New York, mm -hmm. L.A., L.A. And then this uh, this uh, <gasps> bystander stopped him. Good motherfucker. How how did that? The good thing that person in that truck saw. Okay, play that. That was very disturbing. But play it again. Yes. Okay, fir okay, first of all. She was trying to lift up the baby. Oh, eight Jesus month old, I believe. Christ. Did the baby survive? As far as we know, they're both alive. But that's all the articles say. They're still, they're lucky to be alive. Bro, one more time. Run it back. I'm trying to see something. Okay, this is, okay, stop. This looks like an alleyway of some sort. Um, LA has a lot of those. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yes, it's an alleyway. That's not really a sidewalk, but you could tell there's a lot of residential stuff. Like that's someone's back porch right there. Yeah, the patio. There's someone's driveway on this side. There, there's a fire hydrant over here. So there's a bush right there and there's a wall. So, I mean, you could use it to walk. This or, is probably her garage right here. Yeah. So you could use it to walk, ride a bike, maybe skateboard, be on a scooter, uh, push a stroller. 
Now this Prius, were they distracted? Were they looking at their phone? Oh, no, 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 no. It's a crazy person? Let's hear again, since we just, I mean, we, I rewound it. Just, look, somebody's on the patio up here, unfortunately, having a witness of this. And the guy... Look how her head shattered the windshield. And she just gets up, though, like well, she a has fucking to go, soldier. Well, she has to take care of her baby, bro. Come on, now, these women. Women are powerful. So let me, uh, can I make this bigger? I'm just going to zoom in on this shit. And and it looked like he swerved, or he, she, whatever, right? I don't know. Um, swerved into the stroller. Well, look, here, if you want, here. A 16-year-old hit and run driver in a stolen car who ran over a mom and her child in Venice was sentenced to five to seven months in juvie camp. LADA George Gascon's office tells me this was the appropriate resolution, but I've learned that he has prior criminal history. Uh, per multiple law enforcement sources, the juvie was on probation and violating it at the same time of this hit and run. Um, and he had previously been convicted of a felony of poisoning after he spiked a girl's a teen, a teen girl's, girl's drink, drink at, at Palmdale High School in 2019. 2019. Yeah, she was hospitalized. Uh, despite the juvie's criminal history, sources in LADA's office tell me that the uh, accordance with the policies, Gascon's admin didn't charge the juvie with assault with a deadly weapon or attempted murder for the hit and run, which so led... he stole that car. Yeah, and he violated probation, and he got a criminal record, and Gascon is soft on crime. And I believe he was high or or, or something. He was on something when this happened as well. L see, see, look, sc scroll back up. Yeah. This the type of shit I be wanting to post on my motherfucking page, but I can't. I cannot post this on my page. I can't just be like. Wow, y'all, how do y'all feel that this 16-year-old hit-and-run driver in a stolen car did this, hit the mom with the stroller and the baby, and they gave him only five to seven months in juvie camp because their, uh, their DA said it was appropriate resolution. When are they going to vote this guy out? I don't know how that works there. I don't know what the terms are. I don't know how long he's been in there, but there's a lot of Catholic listeners. I know there is. And is anybody on the left, like whether it's Big Boy's Neighborhood, like I'm, I'm not saying he's on the left, but like just mainstream. No, from that area. Like radio. Yeah. Yeah. Like radio people. Uh, um, is any, is or do you have to go follow B Melugan 33? <laughs> like my point is, here's my point. There should be an uproar. Because he's a Fox News guy. Oh, yeah. Like, there should be an uproar about this. But is it like, oh, the shit gets suppressed? And unless you, like, Rogan might mention it, right? Unless you listen to Rogan or follow some of these Fox News reporters, then you're probably not going to. Oh, look, there's another. Here, I didn't see this. This is after the video the that I just News. showed you. Lugin is in Los Angeles for us tonight with that story. Hey, Bill. Hey, Tucker. Well, LADA George Gascon's handling of this case is being blasted by critics after a juvenile was sentenced to just five months of diversionary camp after he ran over a mom and her baby, then tried fleeing the scene. And it was not his first criminal offense. Now, take a look at the video, all caught on security tape in Venice last in Venice, August. Bro. You see that 16 year old driver, no license, stolen car mows that mom down with her baby in the stroller. He then tries to flee the scene before a good Samaritan <sighs> purposely crashes his truck into him to stop him from getting away. Now, multiple law enforcement sources tell me that juvie driver was on felony probation at the time of this hit and run for spiking a girl's drink in high school <sighs> in 2019. Now, despite that team's criminal record, DA George Gascon's administration filed two lesser felony charges for the hit and run which he pleaded guilty to. In a statement to Fox News, Gascon's office told us the five-month sentence was an appropriate resolution and said the sheriff's department actually agreed with the lesser charges, but LA County Sheriff Alex Villanueva immediately pushed back, saying his agency was never consulted, had no involvement in the case, and that they would never be okay with the lightweight sentencing this juvenile received. Now, Gascon's office then sent us a follow-up email admitting the sheriff's department was never involved in the case and they would have to, quote, correct their Pause, statement to bro. us. Now, Oops. late last night... Why not just be tough on crime <clears throat> one time, bro? Get the cuesta. Like, you can't even be tough on crime, not even just, all right, all right, all right look, 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 look. I know we, according to my shit, I'm Gascon, according to my shit, he only supposed to do five, seven months juvie, but we're going to go ahead and give him three years in the, with the big boy jail. You know what I mean? Something. Meanwhile, you know who they are being tough on in California? Cain Velasquez. Mm, of course. Uh, but that's not L.A. It's not, but it's, it's not fucking LA. close. It's California. It's yeah, close no, but, enough. But, but Gascon, I, it's like, 
Anyway, let, let's build Mal Malugan. I had the chance to speak to the mom who was run over. She had minor injuries. Thankfully, wow. her baby's okay. But as you can imagine, she is furious at how this case was handled, telling me in part, quote, someone with a criminal record tried to kill me and my son. And George Gascon thinks that five months of camp is a sufficient punishment. Gascon and his staff are highlighting their incompetence and their complete disregard for victims. Who do you and sue? Tucker, the campaign to recall the George Gascon, has now collected over half a million signatures. That's the most ever recall? for mm. any petition here in L.A. County. Oh, wow. They need about 70,000 more by the July 6th deadline to officially qualify get on and it get it if you're on in the Cali. November ballot. Man, we'll keep I need to ask. And we'll send it back to you. I need to ask Gil, American Cholo. Like, hey, bro, have you heard about this? Yeah. Like, is this on your radar or not really? Um, Dude, when I saw this last seat. night, it fucking, it, I mean, there's so many things we, we talk about that shakes you to your core kind of thing, but this fucking mom was just walking her baby in her stroller. And there's no justice, bro. Like, this is what leftism looks like. Like, you know what I mean? Like, woke as fuck. This Gascon dude, remember, I cited the documentary. It was a few episodes back, like probably months ago, when we talked about the um, Fox Originals thing that... um Tucker Originals. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh -huh. Where he, I believe it was Tucker, I don't know who it was. It's on that damn It's app. a Fox Nation thing, right? Fox Nation, thank you. So the Fox Nation, it's called um, like L.A. Suicide or something about like Where he just, brags about being locked up, right? Is that what you're talking oh, about? Oh, yeah, it was basically what it was is showing how Gascon is woke and he's on some fucking New Age Marxism type shit and he's like, oh, well, the data shows that we got to be soft on these, you know, their minorities and shit. Pobrecitos, déjalos. Mm -hmm. And it's, and then you, they, uh, it was really well done, the documentary, because then it shows like actual recorded phone calls of the dudes like, hey, doc, hey, fool, hey, I'm getting out, fool. Like, hey, man, I got good news off that shit, doc. Um, Gascon, I'm going to get that fool's name tatted on me, fool. And he's basically saying like, um, though, I guess the way it used to be is like that. If that kid was in a gang, yeah. for example, he probably would have threw an extra five years. You know what I mean? Like, um, just, I forget, enhancements. So there's like, oh, a, right, a, right, right, so right. let's just say he got out and brandished a weapon and, and flung it around to witnesses and maybe shot at the guy and or whatever, the guy who stopped him in the truck. Then they would have been like, okay, another enhancement for the, for the gun. Well, tell me if you remember this and we'll go out on this story because it's, it's connected to it and I don't want to move episodes uh, without covering it. But do you remember this story? shocking audio of a sex offender's crude remarks about the victim in a case that has brought criticism of progressive Los Angeles County District Attorney George Gascon. Bill Malusian is live in Los Angeles with the latest for us. Hi, Bill. Yeah, Dana, good morning to you. So oh, LADA guy. George Gascon has taken a lot of heat when it comes to this case. It has to do with a 26-year-old transgender child molester who was sentenced to only two years in a juvenile facility because George Gascon just refused to prosecute her as an adult. So take Her. a look. This is 26-year-old Hannah Tubbs, who was recently convicted of sexually assaulting a 10-year-old girl inside looks of like a my brother -in -law. bathroom in L.A. County back in 2014. Now, at the time, Tubbs' first name was James, and she was two weeks from her 18th birthday. CCTV showed Tubbs going into that Denny's bathroom and then fleeing the scene after the assault, but she wasn't connected to that sexual assault until she was arrested for another crime in 2019. She. And prosecutors say she began identifying she. as female after she was taken into custody. Well, and despite he. having multiple violent crimes on her record already, Gascon refused to prosecute Tubbs as an adult. And last month, a judge sentenced her to serve two years in a juvie facility at age 26, and she also will not have to register as a sex offender. Now, I've obtained I've obtained uh, some of Tubbs' phone calls from law enforcement sources from when she was in custody in L.A. County here in November. This was before her sentencing. In a phone call with her dad, she just gloats that she's not going to serve any prison <laughs> she, time. It's a grown ass man, clown ass a world. Sex offender. Take a listen. Thirty year old dude. Don't worry about it. It's a strike, but they're going to plead. I'm going to plead out to it. I'm going to plead guilty. They're going to stick me on probation, and it's going to be dropped. It's going to be done. Done. I won't have to register once or nothing. For an offender, you don't have to register? I won't have to do none of that. So what are they going to do to you then? Nothing. You know, in those calls, Tubbs also went on to make some extremely crude, disparaging remarks about her 10-year-old victim, openly discussing her sexual attraction for her and laughing about it. So crude, we've decided not to air that audio. She also went on to say she would flee the country if she got in trouble again. So 
I reached out to DA George Gascon's office about these phone calls last week. His team told me they didn't even know about the calls until I contacted them, and Gascon has now released a statement which says in part, quote, after Tubbs' sentencing in our case, I became aware of extremely troubling statements she made about her case, the resolution of it, and the young girl that she harmed. If we knew about her disregard for the harm she caused, we would have handled this case differently. And now for the very first time, the yeah, victim right. in this case, now age 18, is speaking out about Tubbs' two-year juvie sentence. We're obviously not identifying her, but she tells Fox News exclusively in part, quote, the things he did to me and made me do that day were beyond horrible for a 10-year-old girl to have to go through. That man was very clear-minded and old enough to know what he did that day was wrong and still did it anyway. It's something I struggle with, and it's insulting that this is all he was given as punishment, and I want something done about it. <clears throat> well, uh, they've given me an idea about a, um, like a film hmm. or something where... I might have to get in shape for this role, brother, Ooh. because you're going to have to start seeing some vigilanteism. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Maybe yeah. this, maybe the character is like, I mean, they might already have a character like that. Like I never got into the Punisher show or, oh, and, then, so and then Batman, he's kind of like a vigilante, but like imagine a dude that just goes to jujitsu three days a week. <laughs> <laughs> he's not even that obsessed. God damn it. It's like, like, lives, I get there a couple like times. lives alone. He's just focused. You know what I'm saying? And shit like this makes his blood boil. Just and eating acai and, bowls in and the right when that man, man who goes by a woman, Tubbs is out there eating his what? Acai bowl? Yeah. <laughs> or, or catch him slipping. That's when you're going to see the bow and arrow, a uh, 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 rear naked choke, you know, it, it, like action pack, Pee Wee. Action pack. Oh, man. I know it's like... It, That's got to be the film, bro. That, I like it. I like it. Because somebody need to fuck him up. I'm just saying. I'm not putting... Whoa, whoa, you know, whoa. You know, Lori Lightfoot, throwing, what are I'm you doing? Throwing, I'm not throwing tr threats. Lori Lightfoot, what are you doing? It's a call to arms. No me pegues. No te vayan a pegar. <laughs> Big tech, no me pegues. Ay, uh, yeah, somebody... <laughs> basically, man, if, if Gascon keeps that up, you might see more citizens taking stuff into their own hand, two hands. Yeah, or at the very least, right. join this recall effort. They yeah. have a half a million, apparently need 70 more. But even in, even then, what did we learn from the Gavin Newsom recall? We're going to learn that some of y'all ain't going to make it to court. Oof. Some of y'all ain't going to make it to juvie, <laughs> whatever <sighs> it may be. How you going to run over a lady in the stroller, bro? And they give you five to seven months in a fucking little camp. Yeah, it's fucking disturbing. Man, I, don't know, I, just, I just keep seeing her head bounce off that windshield, man. And guess what? Everybody wants to live there in that smog and traffic. And no, nah, I'm good. I'm good. And that's, and that's near the beach with all the homeless people. Venice Beach. Keep your frozen ass beach. I don't care. We're over here in the great state of Texas, baby. <laughs> yeah, we're swimming in our mud water over here. You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, we might flood a little bit. Yeah, we get hurricanes. Yeah, it's a little, humid. A little humid. It's humid where we live. That's swamp ass armpit. all day long. It's the swamp ass of Texas. Oh, that's what I want to say. You talking about the training, how hot it is. You're going to have to get used to being in the heat this way because you hate the heat so bad. You hate sweating. You hate anytime you're doing something like, man, I'm fucking so I'm dripping down my back. You know, you feel like disgusting. Well, it depends. It depends on when, uh, when where, like, did I just shower or, or what? You want to piss Chingo off? Make him go outside and do something after you just showered. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I'm trying to think of the instance where I, like, complain about sweat around you. But, absolutely, bro, training like that in a hot-ass bodega. You're going to be a savage in a couple weeks. If I go tonight, if I can, because, look, man, my wife, she's stressing about this move. She, right now, we're about to go to Home Depot after we're done recording today and start pricing backsplash and all this type of stuff. But there's a class at 630 that I wouldn't mind making it to. You should. Yeah. Gotta let some of that so steam I out. I kind of let her know. Hey, yeah. hey, look here, woman. Look here. Can manda. Aquí can manda. Look here, woman. You see how much crime we got in our city? I would pay to see Chingo walk on me like, aquí can manda. Yo voy a ir a jiu-jitsu. Man, bro, you would pay to see me have to take the law into my own hands, big dog. <laughs> hey, man. Let's send He's, these fine yeah. people out, man. Everybody out there listening, man, please be careful. Keep your head on a swivel. Please be careful, man. They, these kids, these little teenage badasses, bro um defend yourself be ready on alert and don't expect the da's to come have have some kind of justice imagine if that mom imagine if the mom pushing the bob right there mm -hmm. imagine she was strapped what how much how much law would they have thrown on her if she's oh like she killed God. an innocent he was an angel if she'd have been like hey bro tap on the window because you just ran over me and my baby 
And then what? They'd have been like, oh, throw the book at her. This is white fragility. These are white tears. And if she's up there like, hey, man, sorry, I did what I had to do. What does this mean for black women? Yeah, what does this mean for black trans women? <laughs> what does this mean for Amber Heard? Heard about it. Heard about it. Thank you guys so much for listening. Y'all be safe. Talk to you soon. Peace.